Live from the City of Angels here on the Sunday morning. You're watching Breaking Box Office. We're excited. I don't certainly love Godzilla X Kong, the new empire, right? But audiences did, and they still are not tired of kaiju action. Look at the opening weekend here, $80 million. This is certainly an outperform well above what many expected. I had this at about 55, so we are well over that. We'll get to the world numbers no, uh, momentarily, but I do want to go through domestically first. $80 million for the debut, Twenty, call it 21000 per we talk about that per location average all the time here on Breaking Box Office. Why is that important? That really tells the number. That tells the detail and the success or failure of a film. A lot of these smaller films look like they're big, and you look at that location average of like 2,000. This is 20,000, so 10 times what some of these smaller movies do to show you how important these big tentpole films are to the marketplace and theatricals in a great spot. I mean, when this film's doing 80 million, we just need product. That's all we need. Movie theaters have to have compelling films, even though I don't find this compelling, but a lot of you did. And if you have that in the marketplace, you're going to get what we have here this weekend. Second biggest opening weekend in the MonsterVerse course, Godzilla. Uh, night, uh, excuse me. 2014 was the number one, and that film did $93 million. So we're just a little bit behind that. Let's go through the top 10 locations for Godzilla X Kong as I get you there and get the graphic up. Got to get the graphics going here on this Sunday morning. AMC Burbank, my hometown, my home theater. Boom, let's do it. Number one, Regal, Fresno, two. AMC Mesquite, Dallas, three, four. AMC Empire, New York City, five. Regal, Dania Point. I don't know if that's Dana Point. Or is that no? I don't even know what Dania Point is. I know Dana Point in Orange County here. AMC Orange, number six here in Orange County outside of LA. Number seven is in San Antonio, Santicos Palladium. Eight, Harkins, Estrella Falls, Phoenix. Nine, San Tricos, Casablanca, San Antonio. San Antonio coming in big here in El Paso, number 10, Cinemark, Tinseltown is your 10th biggest location, top DMA markets, L.A., New York, Dallas, Chicago, Houston, San Fran, Toronto, Philadelphia, Phoenix, and Washington, D.C. Here come the world numbers. As I said, this was a massive debut. $194 million for the global bow. We're talking about $114 million overseas. Take a guess what the number one market was outside the United States. You got it. You said it. You said China. Look at the numbers. 114, 80 domestic, 194 total. Here we go. United States, 80. China, 44 million. Mexico, 12.8. India, 5.5. UK, 5.3. Australia, 3.7. Spain, 3.5. And Indonesia at 3.0. So you're looking at a massive, almost $200 million debut here as you go through the international highlights. $114 million on 58,000 screens in 63 international territories, according to Warner Brothers, per their release here. Number one film, both internationally and globally, for the weekend. Opening weekend tallies propel Godzilla Kong franchise past the $2 billion mark worldwide at the global box office. That's impressive, obviously. And this film is tracking above a bunch of films, including internationally. They're saying this is 30% ahead of Godzilla 2014, 25% ahead of Dune Part 2, 17% bigger than Transformers Rise of the Beast. Interesting, though, go back to Dune Part 2, 25% higher internationally. Man, uh, you know, listen, you guys know I want to watch a movie that at least has some kind of intellectual stimulation. This film does none, right? It's better than Meg to the Trench, which is listed here as one of the films that's doing better than. But I mean, you know, I, is it too much to ask for more? Well, listen, I'm excited. I'm excited for the success of this film for movie theaters because that's what we're founded on here at MMT. Generated IMAX global total of 20.5 million, fifth best March IMAX global debut ever. International markets combined for 11.7 of that IMAX. China accounting for a massive 7.5. So, yeah, it's across the board, huge success. We're getting another one of these. <laughs> no. But, you know. Again, the movie theater guy says, hooray, let's go. Let's have another one, and I'll suffer through it. 
So 194 million would slide over to Dune 2, which is now over $600 million globally. Here's the email from Warner Brothers on that. Another 18.4 million this weekend internationally. That means the total now is $626.1 million through Sunday. So now we are creeping up ever closer to 700. I had this at 775. I don't think we're going to get there, but 626 is solid, obviously, after five weekends. Do we get to 725, 750? Don't think we hit 775, but this is success. Obviously, we're going to get a Dune 3, a Dune Messiah. No question about it with these numbers and with the way that Denis left that film. And now it is, let's go through a couple of these country-by-country country situations. Again, China's going to be big here, $46.5 million there. And you just saw Godzilla already at $40 million, 44 there. So to show you the difference between a Dune 2, which after several weekends, I think China was a little bit late on this, but either way, 46.5, Godzilla's already at 44 after one. But still, look, number one, China, UK, 43 million, Germany, 43 point, excuse me, 34.3, France, 34.2, Australia, 19.4 on Dune. How high does this go? Come in with the comments. I'll get to a couple before we roll out of here and get ready for tonight's big Sunday evening spectacular. The other big story here this weekend is Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. This thing tanked in the second weekend. Minus 65%. Guys, terrible. I mean, that is a cliff diving result in weekend number two. Obviously, Godzilla X Kong did a ton of damage to this film, but also the fact that everybody that really wanted to see it went out opening weekend. You see that so often. You'll see it next weekend with Godzilla Kong. It'll drop, but it won't drop 65. It'll drop probably 50, maybe 55, somewhere in there. But this is a really bad sign going forward. This film, I don't know if we get another Ghostbusters. I don't think we need one. I said that after we watch the last Ghostbusters. Why are we even doing this at this point? Also, let's continue. I mean, at this after that film, that film was okay. It was fine. I was, okay. it wasn't like I hated myself watching it. It just really is the end of the road for the Ghostbusters franchise. We've done what we can with that. End it. Of course, I said that about Godzilla versus Kong. Difference is that film is killing it much bigger money money worldwide than Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Also want to talk about a couple of big key things to really fascinating to me, the importance of theatrical exclusivity, right? When you put a film in theaters and only have it in theaters and keep it in theaters for a long time, at least 60 days is what I'd love to see. 45 at a minimum, 30 is like the absolute bare minimum for me. What are you going to do? You're going to drive people to movie theaters to see something because everyone's talking about Late Night with the Devil. I want to see this film. Guess what? Down only 22%. That's important, and that points to the fact that when you make things theatrical exclusive and you do not put them on streaming or announce when they're going to be, people run out to see I have issues with it, but as an overall film, it's one of those films with its flaws. I still think you really need to run out to see. Immaculate's a film I do not think you need to run out to see, but it doesn't matter. Sydney Sweeney's in it. The biggest thing going today in entertainment. We'll talk about her tonight, that Johnny Depp situation. I think it's our lead story tonight. Crazy, right? Insane. I, I got a lot to say about that whole thing about Jeff Snyder, what he had with the breaking news, and then Sweeney and Depp and the back and forth. We'll talk about that tonight. But Immaculate was down only 33, I believe, percent on that. Let's pull it up and we'll look at the top 10 right now and get into that. I also want to mention this Oppenheimer finally opened in Japan. Isn't that crazy? that the film has been out since July, right? We're almost looking at how many months is that? Like 10? We're, we're almost at like nine, 10 months, and Japan finally got Oppenheimer this weekend. I'm sure they could find it on a streaming like torrent site. Not that we recommend you do that, right? No one is saying we should be doing that. All right, here comes the top 10 box office. Let's get into it. I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger. You guys can see the top 10, and then I'll give you the numbers. Here we go. Godzilla Kong, number one, with $80 million dollars domestically 194 on the global whole number two ghostbusters frozen empire down 65 percent at 73.4 million that is stateside alone dune part two 
well over 600 million now worldwide, 250 plus million dollars stateside, down only 37 percent. Another really great hold for that film, even without the Dolby, the IMAX, the Prime, all the big PLF screens. Those belong to Godzilla. I think Ghostbusters got maybe a couple of those but it's pretty much over for the PLFs for Dune. It's still doing very well. Kung Fu Panda at number four, now with $151 million. Immaculate down 39%. Make that 39%. Still a very good hold, and that is at $11 million. Arthur the King at number six, I believe we're at, right? That is $19 million. Late Night with the Devil coming in at seven. IFC, what a success for this. Right? We talked about IFC having their biggest debut ever with Late Night with the Devil. And now down just 22%. Only at $6.3 million, but this is a tiny film. I mean, the budget on this was not much. So you're going to be profitable and possibly, I don't know how you'd do it, a sequel. You'd have to almost do a prequel on Late Night with the Devil and make it almost a comedy, right? Not have it be a horror film. If you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. Toulouse Square comes in at number eight. That is obviously a foreign film. We have Crew. I believe that is also a uh, international feature, and that is at one point five million. Imaginary at twenty six point two. One of the funniest movies you'll watch this year. So bad, it's hilarious. Imaginary number ten. All right, so there's our top ten. Couple of comments before we roll out of here on this Sunday morning. Thanks for being here, Breaking Box Office. And it was uh, listen. At the end of the day, we are just excited to be in a spot where we are making the money we are theatrically because we don't want theaters to go away, right? Animotion, God, Godzilla X Kong's opening just shy of Dune 2. Will Furiosa make it a trifecta? Warner Brothers has the year. I mean, they are, listen, they've got Furiosa coming up. And then right after that, of course, well, not right after, but later in the year, Joker 2. Guys, Warner Brothers is going to have one of the biggest years for a studio in a very long time. We've seen this happen. You know, Disney does it year after year. Obviously, been falling on some hard times lately. But you look at a Deadpool, Wolverine. That film's going to slay. So they're going to be back in good shape. Paramount uh, obviously had that huge year with Top Gun Maverick. And then you look at what Universal's done and their year last year. Oppenheimer and Super Mario Brothers. All those films they had. They had one of their best years ever. But yeah, $194 million on a budget of one thirty five. Pretty good start. Remember the budget? It's at least two and a half, call it three times. So the budget uh, times three is, what is that, 270 plus another half of that. You're looking at at least $400 million-ish to break even. This film should obviously do that And we're going to get another one because when you get these kind of numbers, you just are going to get another sequel to this. The thing is, is here's what I'd say. If you're going to give us another sequel, you've got to build in some time. You got to build in it. You cannot give us another sequel in like a year. People need time away. I need time. Everyone needs time away. That's why we only do the show like once, twice a week now, not like three times. It's too much MMT. No question about it. We need a break. Taylor Swift, we need a break from her. Everyone needs a break from something so they regenerate interest and then they return and they are excited to see the film again. I don't even ask on girl. We'll talk about it tonight. I don't know how they know it, why they think that this is a good film, but it is brain dead entertainment. I'll give it that. John Dune's opening weekend day by day has a much slower drop off than Godzilla versus Kong. Yeah, exactly. Um, You know, listen, this is going to have a much steeper, more precipitous fall in that second, third, fourth weekend. When you look at Godzilla Kong, we come to it next weekend. It's going to happen. It's going to be bad. But Dune is doing very well, obviously, weekend to weekend when it's holding at 30s in the 30s, right? Has it even dropped above 40? I think 40 was the max on the drop. That's very, very impressive. And I can't wait to see what happens next. Thank you, Horror Scenario Schreiber. I appreciate it the super chat next time come with a question do you have one there i'll get you in come on tonight tonight on the mmt sunday evening spectacular we'll be back and i will get to horror if you come in with a comment i'll get to you and thanks for being here on this sunday morning see you tonight for depp sweeney jeff snyder a guy who needs to put his phone away and stop tweeting we'll discuss it tonight on the mmt sunday evening spectacular thanks for being here Breaking Box Office is off the air. Peace. Now.